But this isn't going to turn into a huge mess. More than it already is. I wanted to talk about this yesterday already, but decided not to because Basil hadn't responded in any kind of form publicly, at least not that I know, knew of, and he responded over his profile. Right? Responded to the video of the man himself and updated his Google Doc, which we're going to go through or over while we watch this as well. I'm obviously going to share my own thoughts about this to a certain extent. And... Yeah, that's about it, I guess. It's a bit confusing and a bit messy in the later half of <coughs> his video might be a bit hard to follow. I certainly couldn't quite follow his thoughts. Maybe it has to do with uh, not being extremely involved in the situation as a whole. But I don't know. But Mizi um, made a video called MBM's Most Insane Player. And it's basically a dedicated video to a single player and we're gonna see who's the most insane player at the end of it all hello I don't know but yes six so I did make a few notes nothing too crazy I don't think I need to go into them as much anymore and Spacel has responded but Let's let's go let's see what this is all about. In April of 2022, I uploaded a video that discussed the ethical and practical arguments around cheating in man versus machine. In it, I discussed the feud between Pizzabot, the most notorious cheating organization at the time, and Basil, a vigilante pyro intent on vanquishing them. Basil, in the eyes of many, embodied the spirit of a chaotic good player, someone fighting the good fight in his own unorthodox way. However, the prologue to this drama contained a recollection of my prior experiences with Basil, giving a brief glimpse into how he acts when the cameras are off. I thought nothing of it at the time. It was a pretty milquetoast rehashing of old events that I figured would add flavor to the story being told. Little did I expect that this 1 minute, 13 second lore dump would be the beginning of the most insane, schizophrenic meltdown I have ever witnessed in all of TF2. And today, we tell the story of what happened and how we got here. Basil was very, very unhappy with how he was portrayed in the original video. Claim you know, that, that unhappy portrayal might just, just might have something to do with, you know, impersonating him. I don't know, maybe Weezy wouldn't have a problem with somebody else impersonating himself. Maybe he would be totally cool with that. I don't know. Personally, I wouldn't want to see someone basically pose as myself and then make certain claims to my actions based on not even my own actions, you know. that I blatantly lied and mischaracterized his behavior in almost every instance where I mentioned his name. These public accusations were originally floated in the form of a Reddit post, which did end up getting some minor traction. But after a day or two, no one cared to give it a second look. This post was later deleted and instead transformed into a Google Doc, which has retained a lot more staying power. That, and that Google Doc still exists. It has been updated. Right, this is the original Google Doc that Basil updated that he posted on his profile. It contains a couple of uh, pictures in reference to Weezy's first video. 
and he uh, updated it accordingly to some things that have not been truthful or have been misunderstood. And we're going to go through not the old stuff, but basically the new stuff. That doesn't mean people take it seriously, though. In fact, it's clear that the vast majority of people who read the document think it's a crock of shit. Every time Basil attempts to expand its reach, he just ends up getting memed on. That still hasn't stopped some people from referencing it as a serious critique of my conduct. I think you can guess who. Upset at the fact that he isn't getting the retribution he believes he deserves, Basil has gone a bit mental. He's made 22 and counting different alt accounts on Twitter that do nothing but spam his document under every post I make. He's repeatedly posted it on Reddit despite being flooded with downvotes every time. And most unhinged of all, he created a dedicated Twitter with a clearly provocative name, searched every single person who has ever replied to one of my tweets, and sent them this document outright. If you thought this was automated, I wouldn't blame you. But if you check the times between replies, you'll notice that there are distinct, minute-long intervals between each of them. Basil is doing all of this manually. Now, unlike many... He provides no evidence or proof of this claim that Basil is actually behind all these spam accounts make and spamming like his responses in himself. So this is already questionable at best. Like why why are we talking about this? There's like multiple people that can just make whatever accounts they want to do and make to create any drama they just think up. And there's certainly people out there that don't like Weezy and that don't like Basil. You know, that would most likely benefit from both of them just going at each other by creating other accounts impersonating Basil, you know, the same way he impersonated Basil. So, unless he can actually prove that Basil himself made all these spam accounts. This is just speculation on his part. Like, I don't even know why, why he makes it sound like it's 100% definitive proof that Basil is behind these. So this is just questionable. MVM controversies I've begrudgingly fallen into, I debated on whether or not I should make this video for a very long time. It's clear that Basil really wants my attention, and by addressing his claims, I am inadvertently handing him that W. But I figured that as long as the good outcomes outweigh the bad, we may as well take down this herb and start mincing. So in this video, I'm gonna do three things. 1. Publicly humiliate Basil for your amusement. That statement alone is totally fucked up, okay? There have been a couple of people in his comment section itself calling him out for, you know, calling him a schizo, which is like a mental disorder. And even if he doesn't mean it like this, it's like an MVM term for people that are kind of unhinged. So we could give him the benefit of doubt there, but it's fair to not make fun of someone with a mental disorder. But even if he wouldn't make fun of, of it like this, and he would have just said humiliate Basil for fun, does that still sound like someone who's, who's worth listening to? If he makes a 50 minute dedicated video, just humiliating another player? I don't know, it sounds a bit fucked up if you ask me. Because trust me, there's no shortage of content to work with. 2. Address every claim found in the document and chop through them like a chainsaw monkey on speed. He claims that he's chopping through it, but at the same time he's also confirming some of the points that were actually true and... Already, he's not doing what he pretends he's going to be doing. Because he's actually confirming the stuff that are in the document himself. And three, take the money that this video generates and do some S-tier shit with it, which I'll announce at the end. Yes, which is basically just 
promoting himself some more. So he's publicly humiliating another player for by financial benefit to further his own goals. Which is... I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Kind of shit, if you ask me. If he wanted to go like a more normal route, he could have said that he's donating the money to maybe an organization against mental disorders or something like this. But monetizing the shit for his own gain. Kinda weird, you know. You could basically argue that he himself benefits the most from all this drama. So you could also make the argument that he himself is initiating all of this. You know, who, who's to say that he didn't just have someone else impersonate Basil again and create all these fake accounts just to perpetuate this drama further? Because, you know, drama sells, surprisingly. So, this video was sponsored by War Thunder, a military... And, yeah, this drama video about humiliating a single player is also paid you know, by a sponsor. Which is an extra... I don't know, fuck you, I guess? And it doesn't sit well with me, somehow. I don't know. I'm not gonna listen to that, because I really don't give a fuck. ...for those vehicles, and much more. Alright, so before we pummel Basil's document into the dirt, I figured it'd be worthwhile to give a timeline of events. We'll be quick about this, I promise. Around summer of 2021, yes, really, we're going that far back, I ran into Basil for the first time in gang. This was the encounter laid out in part one. He airblasted the bomb carrier to the hatch while being entirely unresponsive, despite constant prodding to open up. This These instances right here are recreations, which he later also confirms. And there's also something uh, Basil confirms in his own document. That's at the beginning where he was starting his video, but it's basically the same footage that we're looking at right now. And you can also tell this by just seeing um, the this chat the first that's time happening I as well. This is not an official man up server, and I don't think, I don't know, Basil would be playing on these kinds of servers. So this is just him being on a community run server and then recreating basically what he thinks Basil would have done or did do back then. But we don't actually have any video footage of it, so he could make any claims that he really wants to. But, I don't know, if you don't have video of it, you can't really show it. And impersonating someone just for a recreation of events that might have happened is a bit sketchy. And griefed in my long history of playing man versus machine, so I remembered the event quite well. Later on in 2021, I would run into Basil a second time where he pulled the exact same stunt as before. He griefed our game, didn't say a word about it, and demoralized our lobby to the point of a mass rage quit. This is also a recreation, you can see this again, by just being on the community server. And uh, I don't think Basil would outblast this giant to the hatch because... That giant doesn't even have a bomb, but I don't know. Maybe he would, who knows. I can't really say whether that's true or not. But these are recreations, and he confirms this later on. And Basil also reconfirms this. Now, unlike the first encounter, I never mentioned this one in the original cheating video. I had it in the rough draft of the script somewhere, but it hit all the same narrative beats as the first encounter, so I elected to cut it out for pacing reasons. But yes, I actually had a second encounter with Basil that predated the PizzaBot showdown. That was the third encounter with Basil, which happened on February 17th, 2022. I don't think there's much to explain here, it's all covered in the original video, which for 
context was uploaded on April 29th, 2022. A couple days went by, and that's when Basil would create his original write-up on Reddit, while also sparking a flame war with me in the comments below. A few weeks later, he'd create a fake alt account on Discord, reference himself in the third person, and start white knighting on his behalf. I should go look at this message. He says it's a fake account, but this is just Basil's account on Discord, and he renamed it to basically go undercover and then was prodding Wheezy for information. Which is a smart thing to do, right? You're, you're baiting information out of the person you want the information from by just posing as someone else. And he's not being, like... How do you say? He's not trying to make Weezy look bad, he's just trying to make him say things that he needs to hear and wants to hear, that he might not disclose to, the ba to Basil himself. So posing as someone else entirely that just wants to know what's going on. Totally fair, and then he changed his name back to, well, his own name. So him referring to himself in third person, I don't really see a problem with that. He also talks about this in uh, his dark is about the Reddit post that has been deleted, and then he uh, basically made this Google Doc, which he expanded on. And he says this here too. When he posted the real page, Basil posted was the first point that was shown. Basil has not posted any other posts regarding busy on Reddit. So if he claims that he didn't make more accounts spamming his dark around, and then Weezy says that it is Basil. Like you have a word against the word. How how are we gonna how are we gonna prove who's who's in the right there, right? You can't. One guy says one thing and the other guy says the other thing. You can't prove it. So can only go by everything else. I don't see a reason why why Basil would go out of his way to to go to such lengths after over like a year or two like why now does it make sense after such a long time to just bring this back up again it's a bit odd so yeah he says this too creating more than 22 accounts in total that spams this google document claims have made with absolutely zero evidence which is true he has no evidence his description contains no resources to anything he's talking about at all he's he didn't even link this document himself, which is just, why, why not just include it? People can just read it themselves if they want to. You know, you could take anything out of context that is in a document or anywhere, and then make it sound like it's the truth. Just, just include the resources, so people can check it for themselves. So yeah. Basil confirms that he's blocked Weezy, and it will be blocked. And, uh, yeah. I do not know who's behind him, however, I do have some screenshots of post a fake Basil account. Okay, we're gonna do this. Right, this is a fake Basil account. And you could probably say that it's fake, just on a glance, because I don't know why Basil would have Takubat TF linked on his Twitter, out of all things. Because, as far as I know, Basil has no, no relation to Takabat whatsoever. And also the responses he gave to Weezy, like just saying straight up, fuck you in all caps, does not sound like something Weezy, uh, Basil would say to Weezy. This sounds more like someone trying to just create drama out of a situation that doesn't exist or is just way overblown and you can definitely see this in this document the way basil writes versus the way these posts are written and you could say he's just you know trying to sound different but i don't know it's just like why would he even say this shit and then just fuck off, dude. It's literally me, Weezy TF2. Like, why would he address him with his, his Twitter name? Why not just say Weezy? He's also not calling him Weezy TF2 in this document. It's just 
just doesn't add up somewhere. Not for me, anyway. Uh, 432 shows footage of the impersonal griefing, the note of it being in that basil, which is true. In the same video, he's showing the same fake footage or recreated footage, as he would like to put it. Again, for the third time, without any distinction whatsoever. And yeah, he addresses it in the video itself, but I don't know, you'd think at this point he would put something in the corner saying that it's not actual basil that is doing this, that it's a recreation of some kind. I don't know, several people in this comment section have also made that suggestion to just do that. And even though that would be a step forward, I still wouldn't agree with just impersonating someone else. Because even if you have 12 million signs saying that someone is just... It, it's a recreation, it's not the real person, there's always going to be some people who just don't see it, don't want to see it, and they're just gonna go out of their way and fucking believe. Oh. Basil did this, so he must have done this, even though it's just a recreation or just faked or whatever. So I still wouldn't see that as a, a real solution. A step forward, maybe, but if you don't have the footage, you don't have the footage. Simple as that. This is the footage we saw with the cheating snipers, and that is actually Basil, which is true. And he also confirms this. The Reddit post did happen, and he deleted it. This is about the Discord messages. Did write the messages on the screenshot. They, however, did not use a fake alt account. They used their main account and just changed their profile picture and username to whatever that name, as it admitted by Basil. To gather more information out of Weezy for the Google documents, since he wasn't willing to speak to Basil. Which is fair, right? If you want information and he's not willing to talk to the person himself, you're trying to gain information another way. He didn't notice it, and yeah. Explains that basically deleted a Reddit post and created a Google document instead, which is true. I mean, to be fair, Reddit, on Reddit, things just get deleted left and right after a while. Whether that's comments or posts themselves and just trying to piece that shit together after like a year or two. Probably harder than just referencing a document you have control over yourself. And yeah, he explains he was playing a mission on Wave 4. Wave 5, Basil and a Taco Bell member called Schwabble joins, which is true, but makes it sound like ba Basil and Schwabble were queued together, just trying to make Basil look like they're either part of Taco Bell or they regularly queue with Taco Bell members. Both of which are not true. And that's also something which is a framing issue. And we have a lot of framing issues for, for Wheezy, where he's portraying something, and maybe it's unintentional, I don't know, where he's portraying something as having a connection where there really isn't. On Discord, reference himself in the third person, and start white knighting on his behalf. The profile is updated to look authentic nowadays, but just for proof, here's Basil's own admittance that he was using an alias to milk me for more information. Which is admittedly a small thing to do, right? The images that are linked here are these, where they're going over several points and then responding to each other. Which we can also see in the uh, last post. That they made to Imgur that this is exactly the post that Weezy was referencing in his video just with the name actually changed back to Basil's real name in August of 2022, that's when he'd delete the Reddit post and create the document instead. At this point, things went quiet for a whole year, and I assumed that Basil had worn himself out. That was until August 2nd of 2023, where I was playing a game of disintegration, and on Wave 5, two pyro players joined my gang. The first was Basil, if you couldn't have guessed, alongside Schwabel, a modern-day Tacobot member. See how this, how this works? Alongside Schwabble. 
And Schwabel was a Taco Bad member. I don't know how long he's been gone from Taco Bad itself. We can check, right? I know he used to be listed as a member. And I have no idea what's going on behind. Wait, it's not right. Go away. Go away. How long he's not been in here anymore, but we cannot find him anywhere in here. So maybe he's left the group, maybe he got kicked out. Who knows? I certainly don't. But while he was a member, he's not anymore. Like so many other players that were part of this. Basil in particular didn't help the team at all. He literally finished the mission with zero damage having been done. The whole Zero damage having been done. Well, there's more claims that we can't substantiate, right? But here's, here's Basil's take. Weezy says that Basil wasn't helping at all, which is untrue. Basil did hinder the robots of deploying the bomb and dealt damage to tanks. The only person who complained about Basil in that match was Weezy. Basil, however, did not play to their fullest potential, as helping Weezy did not feel right because of the actions he had done to Basil. Basil did, however, talk to Weezy in this match, most of the time playing playfully, mocking him and joking around, while still contributing to the team. Even if not to the fullest, they did end up beating the mission. There are some screenshots from that interaction. It is crucial that you go and check it out and then I do this. Because this is this is also the framing bit, right? Here's Wheezy with his alias ZZZ directly saying What's up Basil, right? And Basil probably knows Wheezy's profile at this point as well. So they're chatting here. Just normally, right? The talking. Public venues equals this Discord server where a couple of people saw it. They're talking about impersonation and that he's uh, admitted to it publicly. I mean, publicly is. You could you could say it to ten people, or you could publicly announce it on your YouTube channel, which has like hundred something thousand subscribers. Right? There's a bit of a difference, I would say. And um, yeah, we're just talking about this, and then we can also see quite a few lines of conversations here before Schwabble actually joins this game. So they did not join in a game together, like he made it sound, which might just be an oversight on his part. But they not they did not join together because Basil and Takubat suddenly. Don't see eye to eye. So there's just more explanations here. There's evidence that Basil and Trouble did not join together, meaning they were not queued together, which is correct. Then he's jokingly telling him some stuff, you know, basically egging him on to respond to him. Uh, I don't know if I would call this a threat and scare them with just a threat of making a video. It's kind of... I guess you could see it as a threat, but how threatening is it really to just have some guy make a video? I don't know. Yeah. His claim is that he helped, but we also don't see any uh, end game screenshots or anything like this. So it's again, word against word, but we can see that they did not join together, which is what he made it sound like. Time, he was just flying around with the jetpack, goading me to address him on Twitter, to which I replied something along the lines of, oh, I will, as I planned on posting this screenshot later on in the night. From here onwards, that's where Basil's schizo spree would breathe new life. The aforementioned 22 Twitter accounts, mass replying to all of my followers, and multiple downvoted Reddit posts would emerge shortly after. He's been off duty for the past month or so, but there's no doubt he'll pop up again. I'll give him props.
props for committing to the bit, but Christ, you'd think after two years he'd give it a break. I bring all these events up because Basil can't help himself from shoving his foot in his mouth every time. As the old saying goes, if you give someone enough rope, they'll hang themselves. And an early 20s YouTuber with a silly hat putting it on film always ends well. So we're gonna go over each point in detail, talking about what's correct, what's misinterpreted, and what are knowingly fabricated lies on Basil's behalf. Let's start with the most pressing and most talked about accusation in his document, that I got a body double to impersonate him for a sizable portion of the footage used. Now, right off the bat, let me confirm that this accusation is 100% true. And not only is it true for my original cheating video, but it's true for much of my other content as well. Confused? Well, let me explain. When getting footage for a video, it isn't a difficult process when you're working off of an already completed script. You can jot down notes for all the footage you need and hunt them down at your own leisure. Pretty self-explanatory, I think you all know the gist. However, what happens when you're given an on-the-fly, impromptu confrontation with a batshit insane high tour that might make for a compelling story later on down the road? You don't get that same luxury. The video isn't written. It's not even a concept yet. So the footage being recorded isn't tangential to the script, the future script is now tangential on the footage being recorded. There's no pre-established checklist to work off of and get every shot you need. You have to spontaneously become a cameraman for a movie that doesn't exist yet. You don't know what footage you'll need, you don't know how much footage you'll need, and you don't even know when or how you'll need to use it. But when the time comes to put those MP4s to use, you better hope that director's vision isn't unusual. Most of the time, it isn't an issue at all. And I want to stress that the vast, vast, vast majority of clips being shown of any toxic encounter are real-time showcases of the events that occurred. But not always. Let's use our gentleman encounter from part 2 as a template to illustrate what I mean. The filler moments of gentlemen standing still while I look at his character model are not real time. They're recorded in post with a body double, though many of you probably guessed that already. Similarly, Coltown has this problem of being beige, and white text on a beige background, especially when your character's moving and your teammates are spamming voice comms, it's just a jumbled, unpresentable mess. So a lot of these lingering text shots were recreated with the dark brown background inside of the spawn room so I could better illustrate to my viewers what each party was saying. I didn't edit the conversation, I didn't fabricate any new story beats, I just took the events that already happened and made them more visually cohesive. I think most people will agree that cases like these are completely understandable and don't require much of an elaborate defense. But as for the actual gameplay, there was only one clip on the final wave that I recreated, where I walk out of spawn and glare at gentlemen using the stock flamethrower. I didn't have the clip of the oh shit moment when it actually happened, so I had to improvise. Additionally, I also recorded some gameplay of Waves 5 and 6 with the body double, but I think that makes sense. Gentlemen didn't grief our game until Wave 7, so there was no reason to be recording up to that point. The reason I'm laying all of this out is because I want to make it abundantly clear what my philosophy is on using imitated recordings. If I have real-time footage that is of reasonable quality and encapsulates the point I'm trying to make, I will use it every time without fail. The problem is, what if I don't have that footage? What if I do have that footage, but in very low quantity? What if I do have enough, but the quality is god-awful? I could cut out a key part of the story, but that makes the video worse. I could reuse the same clips over and over, but that makes the video worse. I could just put up a black screen and let the narration run, but again, that makes the video worse. At the time of writing, it's very much in vogue to shit on content creators for engaging in dubious practices during a video creation process. Does Let's just go over what we heard so far. So, the recreation of footage is just to make his content better, right? So he, he doesn't care about the fact that people impersonate, being impersonated might just have a negative impact on the people being impersonated. Since he didn't give any kind of disclosure that it was actually a recreation and not everything... Basil. Right? And to me, if you don't have the footage, you don't have the footage. Simple as that. If you, if you, if you hear that Basil 
I don't know, killed someone, you're gonna recreate that too? Just based on the fact that it actually happened or what? I, I don't know. Uh, just use the shit footage if you have shit footage. Like, what can you do? It's just, that's how it is. Or record everything. Everything you ever do in the game. Record it, man. If you want footage, record everything. You can't just go, ah, shit, I don't have this footage later, and then fucking come up with some ways to fucking recreate the shit by having someone impersonate someone else. If you don't have it, you don't have it. Simple as that. And I don't know why he's going into this h bomb video at all that's talking about plagiarism. And he's making it sound like it's the most popular thing to just shit on video creators now. Which is just insane to me. Because the H-Bomber guy video was... Exceptionally well done. About many YouTubers just blatantly plagiarizing other creators. Basically stealing their work for their own game. So I don't know how that has any relevance to what Weezy is doing when he's just impersonating shit. Or recreating it, as he likes to say it. This is just a stretch too far, okay? Perfectly so, might I add. But that's exactly why I'm trying to be as explicit as possible. Explicit as possible, right? He, he didn't disclose it at all. He only started disclosing the impersonation after people noticed that it's not the real Basil. Then he goes and admits it on his Discord, but that's it. Then he reuses the footage in another video of his, before this one. Again, without any disclosure whatsoever. And only in this one he actually addresses it, after showing the same impersonated footage. AGAIN! You'd think at some point he would start, I don't know, stopping doing the same shit over and over again by just showing the fake footage, without any disclosure whatsoever, I don't know. It's just. I want no Dumb. room for ambiguity. On the one or two percent of occasions where it's actually necessary, I will use a body double for gameplay clips and recreate them as authentically as I can if the choice is between that or no footage at all. Even in this very video you're watching right now, this basal footage is reenacted. So is this, so is this. Does literally anyone care? I don't know, maybe the person that's being impersonated would care about being impersonated. Does that sound crazy? Not to me. And again, we're like, what, 12 minutes in? And that's where he actually confirms that the footage that we've seen right at the beginning of the video is actually not Basil doing it. So what? Why not just start out with that? I don't know. God knows that not a lot of people watch a 50 minute video on MVM drama. Probably not. Unless I deliberately use these opportunities to mischaracterize the events that took place, I don't believe there's any foul play here. But Basil really disagrees with that. And I would disagree with it too. Like, I wouldn't like being impersonated and randomly seeing someone named as myself in another video doing something that I didn't actually do. Just based on your own beliefs, what I might have done if I was actually there in that server. It's just fucking mental, man. It's insane. Yeah. I don't know. This is just... So, Wild. just to give a brief rundown of what's what here, the pizza bot encounter is all real-time footage, but the 73 second retelling of events is all recreated. Ditto with a couple of clips interspersed at the end. Now, the reason for doing this is quite obvious. The encounter I was describing happened in the summer of 2021, before this channel was even created. It goes without saying that any real-time footage of this encounter does not exist. From there, Basil then made it his mission to let everyone know that this footage was an imposter. And that was cool with me. I didn't care if people learned that the footage was reenacted. I barely tried to hide it. Barely tried to hide it. Does that insinuate that he was actually trying to hide it in some way? He didn't. He also didn't disclose it. Like, why didn't he disclose it? I don't know. He could have just said, "Hey, this happened to me back in the day," and he could have fucking just disclosed it. That it's recreated. 
Like, why not just do it? Just making someone look bad to tell a story? Players on your friends list will usually be differentiated by showing their profile pictures next to their nameplates. I knew this going in. You can clearly see that in many clips, I'm trying to keep my crosshair on Basil as much as possible. There are literally prolonged segments that do nothing but linger on his character. Obviously not everyone would pick up on this being a user from my friends list, but I knew a good chunk of my audience would. A number large enough that it would be inevitable people would ask me about it. And again, I have no if it's inevitable that people if you know beforehand before even releasing the video that people would be asking you about it why not just include it in the video in the first place no problems with that i admitted it several times within literally 24 hours of the video's launch yeah after being called out for it he admitted it on his discord Reading a full lobby of innocent players instead of gathering four friends. This is also an option, right? You could get people together, then recreate a scenario that you want instead of involving other persons, other players that have no clue what the hell is going on. Because of that one clip that he recreated, actual randoms were in the game, it was an official match, and they were just sidelined and basically collateral at that point just for the sake of creating a video. And to be fair, VZ admits that this is not okay, right? It's bad. And we shouldn't have done it, which is fair to say. Basic also gives cheater supporters, and not just cheaters. And that doesn't need to be a cheater in a game for basic grief to love it, even if there's only one cheater supporter. This is, or rather was, true. Back then, Basil did grief cheater supporters, even if there was only one. They believed and still believe cheater supporters are not good for the game mode. That they encouraged cheaters to continue and help them win. They recognized that they were hurting the other four random innocent players, which is also true for the game uh, we recreated that one time in the match. Nowadays, Basil barely goes for them, but we are talking about what Basil did back then and not now. So, what we said about the cheaters' pull part is correct. So, there's a whole different debate about cheaters' pulls. What makes you cheer supporter basically is a broad spectrum. Some people say you're cheer supporter if you refuse kicking cheaters, but if you don't even understand what people are being kicked over, if you don't understand who might be a cheater, right? If I just go into a server and claim that someone is a cheater, you shouldn't just take my word for it, right? You shouldn't just believe what I say. You should assess the situation on your own. You should check out if it's true what I'm claiming and then do the right thing, basically. If that's not kicking the cheater, that basically would make you a cheater support. But unknowingly, right, if they don't know what's going on, I don't know. There's also claims of cheater support or taking cheated loot and we're not going to get into the whole shebang there, but griefing someone random that's classified as a cheater supporter on, on somewhere, maybe you've seen them before and you know they definitely didn't kick that cheater after calling out the cheater and he's a cheater supporter and just going out of your way to ruin the game when that one guy is in the game where there are four other people that just are bystanders, it's a bit excessive. Because you can't, you can't confirm this, it's basically the same, right? You say something about some other person and then the, the other people in the server are just supposed to believe it. Just, so, you can't prove anything at that point. All of my chat logs are public. I haven't deleted anything. Any of you can go look through all of them right now. If all Basil wanted to do was address this clear fact of the matter, I'd have no problems with him. But that's not what happened. 
Basil went on to wax poetic about how my imitated footage is a defamatory caricature of his actions, claiming that because none of the lobbies had a cheater within their ranks, it was misrepresentative of how he acts in-game. Inherent to that accusation is the presumption that he only griefs cheaters, otherwise the footage wouldn't be inaccurate. Now, this is actually quite a scathing accusation, that I portrayed a guy who would only go after cheaters as someone who would go after non-cheaters as well. Two wildly differing situations with varying levels of severity. There's just one tiny, itty bitty little problem with this accusation. Basil doesn't only go after cheaters. Basil has admitted on several occasions to also griefing people who support cheating in MVM, which, to anyone unfamiliar with the game mode, is a massive portion of the player base. Now, fair enough. If there's a cheater plowing through the mission and the four surrounding teammates refuse to kick him, it's fair game to classify them all as supporters and griefing the game becomes more justifiable. But Basil doesn't have such a restriction. If he joins into a random MVM lobby that has what? I repeat, one cheater supporter present, he will whip out the leaf blower and prevent the game from moving forward. As I've repeatedly brought up, only 50% of MVM players have a hardline anti-cheating stance. The I, I talked about this in his other video as well. He says only 50% of players have a hardline stance against cheating in MVM. Only. I would say half the player base of MBM not liking cheaters. Kind of kind of a big percentage, right? Like half the player base. I wish it was more. But according to his poll anyway, there's nearly 40 50 percent and then the other page has like 47% they want loot and 36% just don't care. So it's basically a 50-50 split, which sounds correct, right? Half of the players agree, half of the players disagree. The rest are either pro-cheating or ambivalent towards it. That means the likelihood you queue into a random lobby and have every player be in lockstep with your position is literally 3%. I don't know how he gets these numbers together really don't maybe it has something to do with the chances of the five other players in the server being an actual cheater supporter i don't know i would say the vast majority of players i run into games just play the game i don't know if they're cheater supporters that only comes to light when there actually is a cheater and they just say blatantly outright that they don't care so under Basil's philosophy of it being justifiable to grief lobbies that contain even one player who's cool with cheating, an average of 97% of MVM lobbies have the potential to be griefed. I don't know where he's pulling these numbers out from. He's, he's saying 90% of games you join in man up have, a, have players in them that are cheaters supporters. Which sounds a bit fucked to me, okay? If 50% of players in, in this poll say that cheating is not okay, and the other 50% say that it is, I don't know how it gets to 97% of games being filled with cheaters of holes. Maybe I'm misunderstanding it, I don't know. Basal footage in the community server, yeah, that's just a recreation. Again. Right. If the, if it's a, I have assume anyway. If it's a man up footage, then it's probably basal. But if it's anything else, it's most likely not. Or uh, minus. So I, I don't know where he gets these numbers from. Ninety seven percent of players in man up are not cheaters of walls. Okay, most definitely not. And what does Basil think about this? He doesn't care. Quote, the cheater supporter that is in the lobby that I am griefing is at fault, not me. Not only do they obviously support cheaters, but they wholeheartedly know why I'm griefing. It is their responsibility to man up and tell the team that they're a supporter or leave the game. 
Yeah, all 50% of them. First off, you don't know that. You don't know at all whether or not your target is privy to the information behind your griefing. Especially since Basil also admitted to rarely ever using chat, so his rationale would never be vocalized. A claim I can testify firsthand is correct. A lot of people have gotten blacklisted on Tacobot and didn't find out until months or sometimes years later. Not every by the way, riveting big rock for the trailer. Everyone tagged with an offense is hyper aware to how individual members of a niche, ragtag team of griefers will perceive them. Definitive statements like this are just clearly wrong. Second of all, what an absolutely appalling hand waving of all accountability. Wow. Appalling hand waving of all accountability? Almost like, you know, explaining away the impersonation of other players by just for the sake of content you know to make my content better i impersonated you it's almost like the same thing i would say in basil's mind he bears no fault no responsibility for the four other players getting trampled at his peril. Again, we're not talking about a cheater or a group of cheater supporters. We're talking about individual MVM players dumped into random games with one guy who believes in one of the most banal stances imaginable. I'm here for loot, give it to me faster. One guy thinking that is enough justification for him to sink the mission for everybody. Without getting too meta about this shit, this is why people aren't fans of vigilantism. Because these are the vigilantes. People intent on imposing their rule no matter the consequences with zero regard for who gets hurt in the process. It's technically not our rule, right? It's Valve's rule. I'm pretty sure Valve does not allow chills, right? And if you support cheating, I don't know, maybe they allow you to be okay with cheaters in games? I, I wouldn't think so. Who knows? But cheating is definitely not allowed, according to Valve. As little as they do about it, it shouldn't be allowed. You don't get to spend years holding games hostage with a 4 to 1 ratio of good guys to bad and then confidently position yourself on top of a moral high ground arguing none of the bad outcomes are your responsibility. Basil states, and I quote, Cheater supporters are just as much destroying MVM as cheaters. How little self-awareness do you have to have to not recognize the sheer irony of that statement? People like Basil or Vruyi or Gentleman, they've done far more harm to Man vs. Machine than Pizzabot ever could. Any method targeting one opponent at the cost of ruining Man vs. Machine for four non-offending players is a solution that bears no chance of not being worse than the problem. But they don't care, because this was never about upholding the integrity of the game mode, no matter how much they delude themselves into believing that. Their star value is tribalism. That's their MO. To them, the four other surrounding teammates aren't viewed as players. They're collateral in a never-ending game of Air Blast Blood Sports. So when Basil accuses me of misrepresenting him because I didn't show him griefing cheaters, my response to that is, yeah, because you don't only grief cheaters. In fact, he griefs a lot more people than he lets on. As I was queuing into games to get B-roll for this very video, I stumbled into a Coal Town lobby in progress that was getting sabotaged by another pyro griefer. His reason was because our sniper was using the Machina. I'm not kidding. Uh, don't use Machina, and then the uh, engineer said, oh, the, let him play however he wants. And, um, you know, I decided to agree. Now, if... Which is just unhinged behavior on that guy's part. I don't know why he would do that. Machina is a normal sniper weapon. It has explosive headshot. If you know how to use it, it can just do as much as any other sniper rifle that has the ability to headshot. Kind of weird, but okay. If you look at my character portrait, you'll notice I'm not using the banana loadout. I'm rocking an alias and my profile is private. No one on the team is aware of who I am. And in the mother of all coincidences, literally on my first game I jumped into for recording's sake, one of our teammates, completely unprompted, relayed a past experience that they had with Basil. He was mad that I was not 20 plus tours. 
According to this player's testimony, Basil griefed the lobby just because he was a low tour. Now, the sentiment of X bad thing happened to me because I'm a low tour is one that is as frequently debunked as it is touted. It's very rare for someone to get kicked or griefed just because of a low number. Usually there's some kind of gameplay or behavioral rationale behind it. So, I attempted to play devil's advocate on Basil's behalf asking the player if he suspected there may have been a cheater supporter in the game. The player then answers the question by stating that Basil explicitly told him his reasonings in chat for why he was griefing. Like, he literally typed in chat, he's like, oh no, it's because you're too low level to be playing with me. It's like, why didn't you just say that? I probably would have left. That doesn't sound like someone who only griefs for cheater-related crimes, now does it? For the record, I later revealed to him who I was, but that was after he gave me his testimony, so it's not like he blatantly hyperbolized facts to get in my good graces. Just wanted to make that clear. Now, even though I am covering this, I recommend you take this accusation with a grain of salt. There are several factors that could be obstructing the truth of what happened. For one thing, Basil doesn't talk. By his own admittance and based on my own negative experiences with him, it's seemingly very rare for Basil to ever vocalize whatever his bogus rationale of the week is. So hearing a testimony where Basil explicitly gave his reasons as to why he was griefing, that seems a bit out of character. Additionally, it's possible that this player misinterpreted what Basil meant by that statement, and he's not giving a direct quote. Hell, for all we know, this might not even be the same Basil as the one we're talking about today. What, really? It might not have been the same Basil? It could have been, like, a person impersonating Basil? You know, to make him look bad? That's crazy, right? Who would do that? Impersonate another person. You know? That's just strange. It's almost like you could do this on Twitter too. Just impersonate Basil and make him look bad. Wow, that's crazy, huh? But no, we're just gonna jump to the conclusion that all these 20 fucking fake Twitter accounts... Yeah, that was Basil, okay? I, I can't really prove it. And he... But he's just going with it anyway. Even though he's saying here... To, to give it the benefit of the doubt. Like, why, why is he giving this the benefit of the doubt and not all his Twitter spam? I don't know. He didn't show any proof that it was Basil who was doing it. Why does he believe that one over the other one? No clue. Until I see multiple people corroborate this story, I don't think we should take it at face value. I don't believe this evidence on its own is substantive enough to prove that Basil won't mess with people unrelated to cheating. But you know what is? A fucking video. This is footage of a pyro player by the name of Kina locking a big rock mission on the last wave. Now, fair enough, this isn't Basil technically griefing himself, but the only reason Kina has the ability to stall the round indefinitely is because he has infinite ammo a la the dispenser. And guess who decided to build it there? To me, these actions are one and the same. This kind of permanent game locking literally could not be done without Basil's help. Kina can lock the boss temporarily without an NG, but eventually the pyro will have to retreat for ammo. He can push the giant to the hatch, but there are measures you can take to counter that. Basil was the cardinal factor in allowing this group to be ruined, and he took those reins without a care in the world. Were there any cheaters? No. Were there any cheater supporters? No. They held up the game for ransom because the team refused to kick the medic player. Kina straight up says, F1 or this won't stop and his reasoning for locking the game was because the medic was apparently toxic and annoying on a prior mission. It's completely okay to have a low opinion of some random player. That's all well and good, but you don't respond to that by flushing three unrelated third parties down the shitter with him. Toxic and annoying. Again, the irony is palpable. Right. He also addresses this in this document. There's all sorts of other things. This is about Lian. He's mad at him for having more than 20 tools. He really follows it up by saying that's because this basil grief the match. I do know if Leon is trying to light up the mood and to tell a few jokes, but I'm going to need to let you know that this is probably the most stupid accusation basil against basil I've ever heard. It should be a no-brainer that what Leon has said is not true. Probably. 
Ja. Basil, Weezy automatically assumes Basil would start griefing because of that, which is also really stupid. Because you're low level to be playing with me. Basil never said this to Liam, as stated before. Basil did, is not the type of player to say anything in chat. Right? He also said this himself. And it also doesn't sound right. Like, it doesn't make sense. Why would he complain about low level players as a solo queue player himself? It just doesn't add up somewhere. Okay, the Kina footage. I don't know who Kina is, no clue. But his basis explanation for it. He provided a dispenser, that's true. Is a recognized semantic player on the team, the person called Centaur was the target of Basil, because Basil and Centaur have had altercations in the far past that have nothing to do with MVM. Centaur harassed Basil and vice versa. That day Centaur joined the match and that was the first time Basil saw them in a long while. So Basil took the chance and did what they did in the video. Asked Kina for help, so Kina changed the pyro and Basil provided Kina with a dispenser until Centaur left the game and they finished the match. So this is some... Uh, Outside MVM drama being brought into MVM as like players, which is unrelated to any cheaters, cheater supporters, which is well, it's just personal drama between them. I don't know what that is, what entails, but yeah, involving other persons in it. Kind of, kind of stupid. This was one of the only exceptions Basil had done since for them. This was nothing like an this was something like a now or never moment because of all the harassment that had happened between both of them, whatever that entails. The content of the video is correct, and there were no shields or supports present, and the actions of Basil in that moment was more than wrong, even if it's a deep hatred between them, and Basil recognizes that. But you cannot generalize it and tell that Basil grieves everyone they don't like because that almost never happens. Which is also a fair point, right? It happened this one time for a reason that has nothing to do with Chisels or Chisels portals, but you can also you can also make that statement that just because of this one instance, this is how it always is. Some of these points about Dimension are true, but only the past. I do not blame Weezy for not keeping up with Basil, which is fair, you can't just keep up with what's going on in other players' lives, right, and how that stance changes, so... So let's go over everything one last time, shall we? Basil has proven he's willing to grief a lobby if A. There is a cheater on the team. B. There is a cheater supporter on the team. 97% chance, by the way. Again, no idea why he's pulling that 97% of Jones. It's just a bogus number. C. There is a player he doesn't like on the team. And D, allegedly, there is a player not deemed appropriate enough skill level. Basil claims that I'm a bold-faced liar because my reenacted footage doesn't showcase him griefing for reason A. However, the footage I showed is a point-for-point -point representation of what an onlooker would see had he been griefing for reasons B, C, or D. And considering that there were no cheaters during my first two encounters I had with him, by process of elimination, he had to have been griefing my first two lobbies for either reason B, reason C, or reason D. Ergo- His justification for the recreation of the footage is again, this is how it would have been if the real Basil would have been there. And he says he, there were no cheaters or cheater supporters in that game, according to his knowledge. But what if he just didn't know that there was one? Right? We don't know. Maybe he didn't even notice. Maybe Basil knew that there was one, and Weezy didn't. And so there was just a misunderstanding there about the situation as a whole. And he interprets it as being grieved for no reason. And to be fair, being grieved with a reason is not that much better, but it's not something that I think Basil would do just for shits and giggles, right? Oh, the reenactments I made for those encounters were not misrepresentative, nor were they defamatory. I didn't make Basil look bad. He did that to himself.
a fair statement, right? Basil made himself look bad in the eyes of the people that didn't know what was going on, right? They just got grieved and didn't understand why. And that's fair, but also a misrepresentation of just footage that isn't actually Basil and it's just a recreation and impersonation of actions that he might have taken. I don't know. He might have looked bad, but he certainly made him look worse. For transparency's sake, I'm willing to admit that I'm not perfect here either. I, very stupidly might I add, thought the best way to prove that Basil griefs innocent players would be to encourage someone to grief innocent players. Yeah, uh, real talk, that was definitely a dick move on my end, and if you want to call me an asshole for doing that, Modern Wheezy definitely agrees. This was actually what I was referencing near the end of part 2, by the way. And just for full accountability, I've encouraged this before. I was down in the gutter with the rest of them. A lot of people didn't catch that, so I figured I'd address it here. I can assure you, no low tours have been harmed in the making of this video, or any video since that time period. Though, fun fact, on Basil's expose Twitter account named When Will Wheezy Admit His Mistakes, in literally his pinned fucking tweet, he shows a chat log of me blatantly admitting to this mistake. So, uh, good one, Basil. That was by far the most pressing accusation in the document. But one look at that video runtime will tell you that we're not done here. Basil just couldn't help himself from grabbing the crack pipe and beelining for every deranged conspiracy he could possibly conjure up. I'm dead serious. Some of this shit borders on genuine, clinical delusion. The more information Basil provides, the less credible he becomes. It's why all of his efforts to make the document more widespread have failed miserably in garnering him support. And I am more than happy to be the final nail in that coffin. Let's go back to Basil's original Reddit post, the one that predates the creation of the doc by a couple of months. As mentioned earlier, this Reddit post is deleted, but we can use the Wayback Machine to figure out exactly what was said. Much of it is a precursor to the accusations levied in the document today. Some stuff added, some stuff removed, but by and large, it's mostly the same. However, within this Reddit post, there are a couple of seemingly insignificant points that would later reveal something odd. In the cheating video where I give the rundown on Basil's past, I say the line, despite my best efforts to talk him down. Which was completely true. The encounters I had with Basil were the only times I'd ever been griefed prior to becoming a content creator. I remembered very vividly wanting to get to the bottom of why he was doing this, and I also remembered the ensuing frustration from when he kept his mouth shut the entire time. Basil, in the Reddit post, refutes this accusation by saying, quote, Wheezy never tried to talk me down. Not only since that wasn't actually me griefing, but he didn't even put in the effort to add me and talk about the topic in his YouTube video with me directly. Now, if you're playing at home, you'll notice the obvious problem here. The original claim was that I tried to talk Basil down during our first encounter. Yet, as a refutation, Basil provides testimonies pertaining solely to the third encounter, the pizza bot one shown off in the video. There is no way Basil could miss this had he been paying attention. The segments are distinctly differentiated in the video. Basil's drama with PizzaBot isn't even mentioned until 55 seconds after I make that statement. So why would the claim that I attempted to talk him down be referencing a mission that the audience doesn't even know happened yet? The answer is, it wouldn't. And we'll come back to this in a bit. Another oddity I found within the original Reddit post was that Basil speculates on my reason for creating the footage. Quote, All of that just because of a personal vendetta against me. Perhaps because I griefed your games full of cheaters back in February. Before I put the pieces together, this accusation didn't make any sense to me. Why would he feel the need to speculate on my motivation for showing him off in the video? The motivation is obvious. You griefed my lobby, eat a bag of dicks. In Basil's mind, the explanation I gave in the video about having prior dealings with him had to have been insufficient. Because if he believed I was telling the truth and that my summary of events played out as I said they did, there would be no reason to rebuke my narrative with one of his own. Additionally, why would Basil debunk my claims of trying to talk him down in the first encounter using context exclusively relating to the PizzaBot one? You can only really draw one conclusion from this. In Basil's mind, this is the only time he ever actually griefed me, and everything else in my video 
is a retrofitted lie motivated by that event. Instead of believing real events from a real story that really did happen, Basil assumed that the pizza bot encounter was the catalyst for my disdain towards him, and that led me to fabricate a fake story with fake events that never actually happened, all in the name of casting him as my villain of the day to make him look bad. Now, at this point in time, Basil hadn't contaminated the well with 18 gallons of rat poison, so I just assumed that this was an honest misunderstanding. It was clear that Basil didn't remember the first two encounters he had with me. That's, that's the crux, right? He, he didn't remember the first two encounters with him. And that's also what he changed in his dark before. Was best efforts to talk him down. Weezy has tried to communicate with Basil in any way. He actually avoided any kind of contact. He didn't put in the effort. He corrected this himself. Same as this point. Right? If you can't remember an encounter from like two years ago and then you encounter the same person like a year or two later, chances are you don't remember. And that's completely fair. I wasn't a prominent content creator during either of those altercations. So, I reiterated my statements in as much detail as possible, including all of the necessary context he missed the first time around. And it seemed to work out pretty well. Upon reading my recollection of events in more detail, he then stated, quote, As you said, I do not remember griefing you these first two times. I'm just gonna believe you're telling the truth. Okay, cool. Basil is now well aware of the actual context pertaining to me attempting to talk him down, and his speculation about this being a retroactively fabricated hit job cannot logically follow should he believe my testimony of events. So, why are those claims still in the document? Like, let's get this straight. Basil completely misattributed the context to which my statements were being referred to. I give him the proper context. He acknowledges this proper context, but when it comes time to make the document, he still decides to run with those same debunked claims. I figured that this had to be an oversight, what with the tremendous amount of control C, control V, and I was willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, until I realized he then went on to double down on his debunked narrative and add a completely new line that wasn't in the original Reddit post. Quote, the reason why he only has this one clip of the real Basil is because that is the only time Basil had griefed him. In that one game that was in February. That's why he had to use fake footage earlier. That's- There we go, hey KG. Yeah. This is all a mess. Just fucking pieces together. We are at 30 minutes. Gonna ignore this. It's a bad shit. So he's going over and there's a cheater on the team. This was an insta too. However, Basil tends to leave more cheater games than grieve them nowadays. And I have a speculation why that is the case. Just just on my part, you know, why he would tend to leave more cheater games nowadays. Because Valve actively works towards making the game less controllable for other players to do something against cheaters, you know, with outlast fixes and all that shebang. And that's fair on their part, these tools, or methods, are certainly used to grief games as well. But it was a way for players that did not want cheaters in games to make cheaters feel unwelcome. And the tools being basically taken away without Valve actually improving their game on dealing with cheaters themselves just I don't know we have less control over dealing with cheaters as the players and Valve won't lift a finger like before you might have done something about it but now that your resources are getting more limited it's just easier to leave and find a different game right there's a cheater supporter on the team 
This was true and very strict. If there was one Shiva support in a game, Basil would grief it, as mentioned. Nowadays, Basil doesn't care too much. If they find out Shiva support is in a match, they just leave. Which is fair, too. I mean, how are you gonna explain to the server that this one guy might have supported a cheater three weeks ago? I don't know. We should stay with his best weapons in the MVM video. Yeah, but even those videos, they just focused on not even having experience with all the weapons. Enough experience with all the weapons, and they were also just focused on two cities entirely. So his best weapons in MVM is just very <sighs> accurate look at it, but not a fully full comprehensible best weapons type, right? It's not going into detail why a weapon might be good and why a weapon is just not. And I may have said before I, I should have may maybe make a um a weapons video tier list in MVM myself. I have a few different views on how to make tier lists. But I, I don't know. I I'm not really interested in uh like making weapon tier lists that much. I don't know. It's not the point here anyway. Uh, there's someone he doesn't like on the team. Well, this was the truth for Centaur situation. This point should not be generalized as that never happens, especially nowadays. In our beef, people disliking other people. What can you do, right? It's just how it is. Is a player not deemed appropriate enough skill level? This was and is. This was, is, and never will be the case as previously mentioned. Basil could care less of someone's skill level. Basil focuses on themselves when actually playing the game. The reenactments I made for those encounters were not misrepresentative nor were they defamatory. My problem was that Weezy and his friend who impersonated me were griefing innocent random players that had no idea they were doing it for a video. Weezy could have easily brought four other friends to go to a lobby or he could have told the random people why they were griefing the lobby in the first place. For some reason, he didn't do neither. I mean... Yeah, he should have done that, but to be fair, grieving at Shield of and then those random innocent players in that game, like, it's not much of a difference there. And I'm not gonna say I'm a saint, I, right, when there's chills and people just don't know what's going on, sometimes you explain the situation, sometimes you don't, because they're not gonna listen anyway. Maybe they don't understand the English words that you're typing, language barriers and everything, like, fucking... We actually made the Google Doc. I think Basil did. He's just referring to him in third person, maybe because it's easier to you know, piece the things together. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure Basil did it. It's on his own profile. And he updated it just for this. So, I don't know. It's just... Mm. Right? It's collateral in a way. It's not nice, I get it. But if they're basically refusing the kick cheers, which shouldn't be in the game in the first place, then. As mentioned, you previously talked to the X account named when will ZTF2 admit his mistake? Using Basil of being the owner once again, which is incorrect, also without evidence once again, which is true. I can claim that X. X account, if you want to say it, is that guy or that guy, but what proof do you have? I have a Twitter account. Nobody knows I have a Twitter account. Someone could just go and make a Twitter account with my name on it and tweet out the most insane shit ever and then just claim I said it, even though I didn't. You can make the claim I said that, but where's the proof of it? There's none. Like, passing it off as Facts, it's just sketchy. Weezy explains how Basil didn't remember that they already have met twice before the pizza burn encounter. As Weezy said, Basil didn't remember the first two encounters with Weezy. That is correct. Weezy questions why that part is still in the document after explaining what he meant with despite my best efforts in talking down. Apologies. That is entirely my mistake and I forgot to change it. The part has been modified and reflected. Thank you for the notice. I mean, you could also lay this out in both ways, right? He just left it in because he didn't care and now he's being called out 
for it that is still in, even though they talked about this prior. You could say he forgot it. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. He's thanking him for bringing it up again, and he corrected it. So. We recorded the part of the document, which was a completely new line added to the debunked narrative. This was a huge oversight on my part, and I apologize for that. I have forgotten that we had this interaction on Reddit. This is why I went along with the debunked narrative. Obviously, if I would have remembered, I would, wouldn't would have added that part to the document. That part has been modified to reflect that. Apologies, and thank you for those. I mean, I don't remember anything, everything that's happening. I don't remember what happened a year ago, right? So forgetting something in like the span of a year, especially if it's just MBM drama, understandable. Weezy quotes a part of the Reddit comment under the post. That comment was mainly because Weezy wasn't just in one game with the Pizza Pot group. He played multiple games with them, which Basil found suspicious, as well as Weezy completing with them, which they didn't like. So the comment was made. It was more speculation than anything, though. The question is why he would leave games Basil was in if they didn't mess with Weezy. Basil thought Weezy leaves their games because he didn't want to address the impersonation, etc. So this is more of a misunderstanding thing again. Weezy left games with Basil in them, and then he thought something else, but the reasons for it were completely different. And... It feels like there was a lot of misunderstanding, and they should really just talk it out one-on-one, -on -one, instead of, you know, resorting to making 50-minute long videos. Take footage? This is the only time you ever griefed me? Which one is it, Basil? He literally admitted he believes I was telling the truth about the two prior encounters that predated the Pizza Bot debacle. But then, with no rhyme and no reason, he flips on a fucking dime and goes back to his original batshit insane conspiracy theory that I was lying about our history to make him look bad. I just have one question. Why would I do this? Like, let's look at this from Basil's point of view for a moment. If the only time I had ever been griefed by him was during the Pizza Bot encounter, what grudge would I hold against him? I literally admit I had no issue with Basil griefing the Pizza Bot members. I know we all laughed at Basil for what he did, but in actuality, I'm not going to condemn him for trying to waste the time of the cheaters. And then went on to affirm this statement in part two. Now, I myself stated that despite my long history of avoiding Basil at every turn, I did didn't object to what he was doing to the cheaters specifically. There's also like a disconnect in there somewhere. He's he's saying that he avoided Basil on every turn after a certain point, but he was desperately trying to get Basil footage, even changing his sleep schedule and everything. And I think he made like public comments about this as well, which is a bit unhinged just for the sake of content, right? try and get in a game with a single person but okay he wanted it for his content fair enough but then he later when he joins in the games with basil he's just leaving like shouldn't he be happy that he actually made it in the game even if he might not even be interested in in seeing him anymore i don't know funny yes absurd absolutely immoral i don't think so conversely when he was debating me on one of his sock puppet accounts i in patronizing fashion made him a cute little microsoft paint graph to showcase when griefing is justified and when it isn't the pizza bot encounter fell under the middle category which has a nice blue check right next to it why would i go through all this effort of making up a fake backstory with a fake timeline and a fake series of events to get back at someone who by my own admission in the video isn't doing anything wrong here. What rationalization could possibly exist that would have goaded me into doing such a thing? Well, let's ask Basil. I have a feeling PizzaBot members had this glorious idea, and you went through with it since they were so nice to you. That's only what I think, though. Who knows what they actually did with you? I... <laughs> I, uh... Is this even worthy of a response? PizzaBot put me up to this. That's the story you're going with. 
it's very evident that Basil is getting really, really desperate. Like, you can't unironically believe this, right? I wouldn't be bringing this up if this was just an offhand speculation from a year ago, but Basil, to this day, openly rejects my summary of events. And he has to, because if he doesn't, every decision I made in framing his actions the way I did is perfectly justifiable. And his grand narrative of me being some vengeful TF2ber purposefully defaming innocent people for money and clout, it wouldn't hold any water. I really shouldn't feel the need to debunk this. It's pretty much self-evidently bullshit. But to really- I mean, to be fair, he is kind of defaming. Basil, right? For money and cloud. After all, he made this 50 minute long video, which is monetized. Saying. Drive home just how fucking delusional you'd have to be to even consider this possibility. Let's run through all the counter arguments. One, when detailing my encounters with Basil in response to his Reddit post, I explicitly point out how he never used in-game chat during his tirades. In a follow-up to this claim, Basil would validate my statement. So the question is obvious. How would I know beforehand that Basil doesn't communicate when he's in the midst of a griefing session had I not experienced it myself prior? The answer is, I wouldn't. Two, as mentioned in the video, I would leave every lobby I queued into if Basil ever ended up on my team. If Basil never fucked with me in the past, why would I ever feel the need to do that? Three, lots of people went after PizzaBot. They literally had a 200 fucking page long manifesto <laughs> outlining their beefs with individual users in great detail. Why would some random motherfucker named after an herb be at the top of that priority list? In the 218 pages containing hundreds of screenshots lambasting dozens of different high tour schizos, Basil shows up in exactly two comments. If PizzaBot were to ever give me a hit job, it wouldn't be on you. Four he also uh, talks about this. Basil wasn't a huge priority for PizzaBot because there were only two comments of them. That is because while the others argued outside of the game, on Steam comments, Discord, etc., Basil never did. So naturally, there would not be a lot of them. Which is true, right? If you don't get yourself involved in all the argumentations. And page long document. Uh, comment threads about stupid shit that happened in game then there's not gonna be like a lot of comments the only act interacted with pizzabot members in game but basil was definitely a high priority for pizzabot members if he says so i don't know i mean it was definitely anti-cheat is anti-cheat so pizzabot disliking him it's not hard to believe at all. Or, what makes you think PizzaBot could persuade me in the first place? I can't believe I actually have to repeat this more than once, but PizzaBot and I were never friends. I reached out to them to record footage for my cheating video, played some missions with their members, and then once I had all that I needed, I cut all contact with them and never queued together again. I was even told behind the scenes that one of the co-owners of PizzaBot was actually one of the players in the cheating group that fucked with me in part two. It's just hearsay, it's nothing conclusive, but it wouldn't surprise me. It's funny, huh? It's just hearsay, it's nothing conclusive. Then why, why do you just believe that all these fucking random Twitter accounts are definitely Basil that created them? You, you don't know. God damn it. So... I don't know, at, at one point he just randomly believes whatever he sees and at other points he just doesn't we're not friends. And five, what I would argue is the most undeniable piece of evidence I have, after the PizzaBot encounter with Basil had wrapped up, I messaged one of my friends who I thought was present during the second encounter with Basil about the events that had just unraveled. In hindsight, he was probably just at a Discord call and not in the game itself. But that's not the point. The point is, this is direct evidence of me referencing a past negative experience with Basil completely off the record. And Basil knows this happened, because I showed him this screenshot in the first response I made to his original Reddit post. It might have even been an integral component of him actually believing I wasn't making things Swear up. Swear to God, this Nothing is such a I confusing mess. Nothing I just mentioned mess. is hidden or trapped inside my own head. 
these are all counter arguments that are based on public information that I was able to think up in literal minutes. And after relaying these arguments to Basil, alongside mountains upon mountains of evidence showcasing that I was in fact briefed by him on two separate occasions before the pizza bot encounter, I genuinely thought he'd come to his senses and reevaluate his perspective. There was just no way you could keep believing this narrative after even a moment of introspection. I wrapped up one of my replies with the following. You unironically bought into the Wheezy is buddy buddy with pizza bot argument, there's no saving you. To which Basil would boldly reply, yes, yes I did. You might think that someone this ideologically driven, this willing to ignore the most obvious facts on the planet, has to be trolling. There's just no way this is an actual person trying to posit a legitimate criticism. But no, he's 100% real. And guess what? There's still much, much more. I know he's been chopped to fine ash at this point, but knocking down false accusations with evidence is much more cathartic than just writing someone off as a crank and moving on. <laughs> evidence, huh? Man. Boy oh boy, would I love to see that evidence. So we're gonna rapid fire through the rest of the document and burn through whatever credibility Basil has left. Hard to go any lower than zero, but if anyone could do it, it'd be him. First up, Basil accuses me of calling him a Taco Bot member. This never happened. What I actually said is that Basil was an associate of Taco Bot members. After all this drama occurred, Basil proceeded to share this screenshot among his Taco Bot associates. I which is which is a funny statement, really, if you think about it. Taco Bot Associates is a strange term. It's a term that's more or less just used, to my knowledge, anyway, in the Pizza Bot scene. I could be wrong about this, but uh, here's my my colorful entry on the Pizza Bot website that is no longer up and running, to my knowledge, right? And uh, being labeled as a Tagobot associate just means that you had links to Tagobot in some form. I don't know if Basil had any of these links ever. And this is also just a, a broad classification. If you maybe talked to someone who was in Tagobot six years ago and you said, fuck you to them. That probably would have made you a talk about associate at that point. Well, who, who knows what they actually believe makes you a talk about associate? I don't know. I think Basil's links to talk about are just non existent. I'm not sure. Maybe he shared something in a Discord, and we're gonna get into that, that had actual talk about members in it. But just because you shared something in a public space that also had other members of other groups in it, doesn't necessarily make you an associate of theirs, right? I knew for a fact that Basil wasn't a member of Tacobot because one of the first things I do when gathering recon on a particular player is checking the Tacobot archives to see if they had any kind of prior affiliation. Basil's name was there, but not as a member. He was a blacklist recipient. He claims that he posted the screenshot of me playing with cheaters on a site that wasn't owned by either Pizzabot or Tacobot, which... Is that supposed to clear you of anything? The site he's referring to is called MVM Lobby, which provides data on tour progress and leaderboard rankings for all public profiles. And it is absolutely true that he did make this image public within the comments section on my profile. But, uh... MVM Lobby isn't Twitter. It's not like every single comment is placed front and center on some kind of lolcal bulletin board. It's a niche website inhabited by a niche group of hardcore MVM players, and judging by Basil's profile, he's well aware of the types of people that like to hang around there. For <laughs> I mean, just just talking about talking about MVM Lobby for a moment. Basil's profile, he's well right. Uh. I don't care what's going on in MVM Lobby. I check it occasionally just for the ease of access of uh, leaderboards in, in case of how many tours someone has done, you know, just out of curiosity. And uh, I think Tagobot also made something similar to that, where so you can check that. Uh, it has a comment section where anyone can leave whatever they want. Some players are banned. 
by the owners of this. I don't know who the owner of that website is at all. There's certainly very many different people leaving comments. And I wouldn't give two cents to any of them, right? But, uh, yeah. It's, it's funny to read through. I give it that. I'm aware of the types of people that like to hang around there. Furthermore, I ended up getting bum-rushed by former, adjacent, and then current TacoBot members within 30 minutes of the PizzaBot mission wrapping up. It got so out of control that one of their members actually apologized on behalf of their spurgery. Wow, imagine that, huh? Multiple people in the group having different opinions. Crazy, huh? It's not like just... A hate group. Imagine that. The only way this could possibly happen without Basil's intervention is if a player related to TacoBot decided to check my MVM lobby comments conveniently right after the encounter, oblivious to the fact that I had just played with their nemesis group. The right people checking on the right profile at exactly the right time while having no knowledge of the situation from a third party seems to be a bit far-fetched, doesn't it? Well, that's because it's a fucking lie. While I was chipping away at editing this video, I found something really damning. If we go back to Basil's document, we can see that he claims to have posted the link on a third party website, nothing else. However, if we go back to the original Reddit post on the Wayback Machine, there's an entire section that was purposefully omitted from the document claiming, and I quote, I have also uploaded the screenshot on an MVM Discord server. That server is not occupied by just TacoBot members. Some left TacoBot long ago, some were not even in TacoBot to begin with, and some just dislike cheaters. Not occupied by just TacoBot members, implying that there were some members of the organization in the Discord, and he was well aware of that. Question I love how he says, the organization, like it's a fucking mafia or something. Why did Basil feel the need to remove this section from his Reddit post when comprising his new document? Well, I think we all know why. Because no matter what way you spin it, my point still stands. Basil did share this screenshot among TacoBot associates, deleted all the admission of doing so, and tried to frame me as pulling the ol' everyone who I don't like is TacoBot card. Good try on the cover-up though. Hit up way back sometime, they might take that shit down for ya. Next he goes on to claim that I was forced to cut out a section of my video for quote, starting a witch hunt, and that my stated reasoning of calling Basil a no-no word wasn't true. I have no clue where Basil finds the arrogance to think he knows the reason for my video getting age restricted better than I do. YouTube support will literally give you the reason why. If you were around for the first week of the video's upload, you might vaguely remember this clip where I endearingly refer to Basil as a continuous source of inspiration to me. As it I actually remember this. I didn't watch it after that one, so I didn't know that he had to change it because he said a, a word that YouTube just doesn't like. But, which is stupid. I don't, I don't see that as like the big, oh my God, he said this? As opposed to other things he could have pos potentially said, but okay, it's just, it's their rules, whatever, I guess. Turns out YouTube really doesn't like that word, and you'll be met with the same action as if you were to drop an end bomb. Regardless of my views on this policy, it's YouTube's house, so I better take my shoes off. They were surprisingly lenient in removing the flag. All I had to do was cut out that 5 second clip and the video got reinstated. Here is literally the screenshot from the day that I got hit with the claim. Basil isn't just wrong, he's obviously wrong. On top of that, I wholeheartedly reject the idea that the video was a witch hunt at all. If calling out individual people or individual groups for their questionable behavior falls under that umbrella, then by that logic, I've started about a dozen witch hunts on this channel before. And surprise surprise, none of those videos are age restricted. He then went on to paste this screenshot of me originally stating that the video wasn't going to discuss the ongoing 
feud between Tacobot and Pizzabot. Now, unlike many of his other statements, Basil doesn't take the liberty of drawing a goofy-ass conclusion on this one. But if there wasn't a negative implication to be made, it wouldn't be in his document. Basil would also end up using this as the banner for his expose Twitter account. Again, he, he continues the narrative that these Twitter accounts are actually something that Basil created without ever providing any evidence of it. I don't know how he can just do this with a straight face. Evidently, he assumes that I was lying the whole time. But take a look at the date on that comment. February 22nd, 2022. Only five days after the Pizza Bot encounter. Remember, this was in the very early stages of conceptualizing the video. Over two months before it had been completed. I originally viewed the swarming of my profile as petty drama that wasn't worth talking about. It was only after that experience where Pizza Bot would detail their history with Taco Bot to me. And that's when I learned that this rabbit hole went way deeper than I thought. It wasn't until I discovered PizzaBot's 200 page long manifesto against the numerous people that went after them that I decided to make it a focal point in the video. That's it. No hidden agenda, no grand conspiracy, I just learned more information and changed my mind. Next he claims that I took cheated loot from the PizzaBot missions, which by the way, is 100% correct. Remember, the original video started off as me just trying to test out whether or not cheated missions were on par with speedrunners. I said as much in part 2. The original video was supposed to be like a 10 minute analysis on how quickly cheated missions were completed, with maybe a couple <sighs> of minutes of ethics discussion thrown in for good measure. The morality surrounding it was interesting, and something I did want to talk about, but I was very much learning as I went. I didn't have a strong position one way or the other. It it wasn't until I got all the footage I needed that I established the stance I have today. That the normalization of taking cheated loot will pose a threat to the longevity of MBM as a game mode. Since then, I've held true to that principle, and haven't knowingly taken any cheated loot. Which is why it shocked me to learn that, at the end of Basil's document, he accuses me of doing just that. I actually distinctly remember the game he's talking about, as it happened mere days after I read the doc in full. And shocker, Basil's leaving out key information once again. As you can see by the screenshot Basil provides, I joined their group on the last wave. Now, fair enough, there are two heavies on the team. Even when focusing down one giant robot, I should still be able to see their miniguns flick with inhuman precision at least a couple of times. Problem is, neither of those heavies were cheating. It was the scout. Like, come on. Do you really think I'd ever be able to catch that? Why in a million years would I expect someone playing scout on the last wave of decoy to be a cheater? People. Yeah. You don't expect it, right? And that's the whole point of it. As a closet cheater. You don't just blatantly go out cheating. You cheat as a class you don't expect it as. You could cheat as any class. You could cheat as a soldier too. And you don't have to know every method and have to look at every player and excruciating detail. Unknowingly, completing games probably happens all the time. Because nobody's going to check if that one engineer shot a shotgun at something and then, oop, that was actually a cheated shot, right? So there's, there's some gray area there, but saying that not expecting it is fair but not noticing it. After a while, you catch onto some stuff, right? Like some, some behavior in games that just doesn't add up. The correlation between damage in a wave and damage done from a player, and as well as the movement, the, the way they hit shots and everything. If it doesn't add up, this probably deserves a second look, right? I have seen multiple scouts in MVM who were cheating, and their behavior playing the game is definitely noticeable if you know what you're looking for but you need to acquire that knowledge either through being told or through yourself like just having a feeling that something is not right right that something is up like a scout just jumping all over the place with the solar power yet somehow annihilating everything in the vicinity right you can't just jump willy-nilly through the air and then shoot left and right and kill everything 
I don't think any human is that good. Just saying. Aimbot for efficiency purposes to get to the loot menu quicker. Scout, even with cheats, comes up short in that realm when compared to all the other classes. After we completed that mission, I ended up queuing for one of the big rock missions to finish up my tour, and I ran into the cheating scout player in that lobby as well, this time playing sniper. Now notice, the only screenshot the cheater provides as proof of this is at the very beginning of the game, as you can undoubtedly tell by all of our scores being zero. I wonder why the cheater didn't take a late game screenshot. That's because it doesn't exist. I remember playing Wave 1 with them while the sniper was humping Big Rock's Big Rock, and once the game wrapped up, someone in chat said something along the lines of, Wheezy taking cheated loot? And as I was sitting in spawn, about to reply, a spinbot sniper ran through the doors. The moment that happened, I immediately left. So whoever gave Basil the information either didn't make him aware of those events, or Basil deliberately ignored them to paint me as a hypocrite. I See, the problem with this recreated footage is also the names, right? If you see someone called the Penetrator, just like like that recreated footage of that spin buying sniper coming in, this is something. This is something that also Steam itself doesn't like when you upload artwork with uh, calling out other other users if it comes to scammers you, know. you can change your name to anything what you want on steam so framing someone with the name the penetrator as a cheater might have implications to someone completely unrelated who also decided to pick the same name and someone might just you know Go to Steam, search friends, and then go to the penetrator's profile, and suddenly they're accused of being a cheater. For no real reason. And... This is another problem with recreated footage. That it just might hit someone with the same name that is completely unrelated to what's being talked about. Because they just decided to have the same name. People just come up with names, and they pick the same names. Of course, not everyone on, on Steam is called ZZZ or Ball Lover 42 or whatever his, his aliases were. Noob. I'm sure if you look for Noob on Steam, you're going to find a lot of people. So, recreated footage, I'm not a fan of. If you have it and it's real, then it's real. But even there, like I said, with the multiple names, if you don't have direct links to their profile, it's, it's a gray area at best. But... I don't know. Could probably debate about this for for ages if you really wanted to. It's difficult. Like a year later that player might just not even be playing anymore and his name is Either way, there was occupied much by someone more else. To the story than what's being presented. Ditto with his claim that I allowed MVM cheaters to stream gameplay in my Discord server. This Okay, I don't know about Discord servers allowing People to stream games with cheaters. No idea. I don't involve myself in Discord. In any fucking Discords. It was true so. for literally all of one day. Or at least I thought it was. I, I don't even know why he allowed it. The end of a video that riled up the MVM crazies on both if sides would be a complete. If his point was just to get footage of cheated games, then why would he allow people of his Discord server to play with the cheaters? Openly. I don't know. It's kind of weird. It shit show on day one. However, I specifically claimed on day one that it would be banned shortly after. And upon making that announcement, I didn't see any cheater streams for the following two weeks. In Basil's document, he claims that people were streaming countless times. If he's referring to day one, fair enough. I let the server devolve into a taco versus pizza bot gangbang for the lulls until I started pumping the brakes to make it an actually pleasant environment. Oh wow, the taco bot, pizza bot, gangbang? Just for the lulls? Really? Creating drama for the sake of having a laugh? I can't believe you would do this! It's almost like those money to be made. From there, even though I didn't make it a hard and fast rule from the beginning, the message had seemingly been made loud and clear to where no one wanted to tread those waters. The funny thing is that Basil has screenshots for over half of the accusations that he makes. 
Yet, for a problem that's apparently been a recurring issue, he doesn't have a single one. I'm not claiming he's lying, or even that he's wrong. But if cheating was going on after day one, I didn't notice it. Two weeks later, once I had been notified that it started back up again, I immediately made a firm announcement that anyone streaming cheating from there on out would be banned. Before the document's creation, Basil had claimed on Reddit, Quote, if Wheezy is against cheating as he said, why is he letting these cheaters play with the people on his server? Obviously, he's trying to put another point on the graph of me being a closeted cheater supporter. A narrative that's always been objectively incorrect, and I believe my body of work proves as much. Just to wrap things up, let's take one last look at his expose Twitter, where we can see even more delusion at play. First, he claimed that I was impersonating and insulting him, and used this screenshot as a alleged proof. These messages aren't from me. They were sent by the dude who I got to do the reenacted footage. Granted, I think this is really cringe, but no, this isn't me. And shock of the week, just like being an associate of Taco Bot members, Basil lied about this one too. If we go back to Basil's Reddit post, he states, quote, Wheezy's friend started to make fun of me while sending these messages to one of my friends while being impersonated as me. I love the Wayback Machine. It's a beautiful thing. He then goes a step further to claim that I purposefully made an alt account to reply to my own tweets in a manic tone. I don't even think that this one warrants a response either, but just to quelch any doubt whatsoever, here is a screenshot I posted in the Chucklenuts Discord server just minutes after this happened. Again, this isn't me. There are probably even more logical discrepancies or outright lies that Basil was told, but I think I've made my point. This video should serve to permanently write off Basil as a dishonest actor who no one should be taking seriously. So <laughs> Hilarious statement to be hearing from Weezy. Just, just, you know, after having impersonated the null player. No matter what happens from here, whether he writes up a new hit piece or keeps Jehovah's Witnessing around the Twitter blocks with a chewed up scroll covered in red pen, at the end of the day, no one will be dumb enough to believe him. And with that goal attained, let's talk about the baller shit we'll be doing with the revenue. In the description below is my newly created Steam group. Go down there and join it right now. Because from December 20th to December 25th, we're going to be giving away every single Australian in the game. Yep, every single one. All you have to do is head over to this pinned thread under the discussions tab, leave exactly one comment below the post, and you'll be entered for all 19 weapons over the coming days. Don't worry if you're watching this after the 20th, you can still comment below and be eligible for all of the upcoming days that haven't happened yet. And that's not all, because last weekend, TF Connect ran a massive charity stream for special effects a charity designed to help bring the world of gaming to people with disabilities. And I figured, fuck it, may as well match every dollar we spent on the Australians and help them out as well. Their campaign is still running, so I'll have a link in the description below if you feel like making a dono yourself. Of course, there are a lot of moving parts that make doing stuff like this possible. I am but one man in a banana suit. So I just want to give my thanks to all of you for putting me into this amazing position I'm in today. And also shoutouts to War Thunder for sponsoring the video. Link in the description to get you started there. But most of all, thank you, Basil. Thank you for letting me clear my rep, donate to charity, do a thousand dollar community giveaway, and pay my rent. All from the easiest slam dunk video I've ever had the pleasure of making. I really, really appreciate it. Now go get therapy, this shit isn't normal. Right, I don't know where he sees that slam dunk at all. After all, he admitted to just faking footage and even faking more footage. But, okay, he monetized it, clearly benefits from all of this to grow his own community of people that aren't, well, I don't want to throw them into, into a bag, but there's definitely people in this community that are just eating it all up, right? They don't think about it, they just see it, believe it, and they're done with it. They don't just go and maybe think about it for a second, do their own research into the situation. And 
Yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't sit well with me. When he's if he wants to donate to charity, charity fine with me. He can do that. But he also has an incentive to just keep this drama up and going because it clearly pays, right? With sponsors and everything. I think his gas pass video has like over a million views. And that was steep with controversy too. Because it's all. Talk about drama for the most part. And his other cheating response. Is also more drama. Which probably. Brings in good good money. I don't know. I don't know his an analytics. I have no idea about this. I don't know how much he gets paid for sponsors. But if you can just. Willy nilly donate shit and whatever. Then, uh, yeah. I don't know. So. We have two parties. One is saying something and the other is saying, so saying something. With some proof sprinkled in between here and there of true statements and not. Some other stuff that nobody can actually confirm. Because it's just random accounts doing random things. So, I don't know. This starting up again after such a long time feels a bit weird. I don't know why Basil himself would bring this up again after such a long time. And ra randomly running into games and kind of nudging, nudging them, right? Into that direction that they haven't responded to these accusations publicly in the form that Basil wanted him to, anyway, is... in my opinion, not something that would start this whole shit up again. Like, why would he start spreading this Google Doc? Just making spam accounts. But who knows? I, I can't confirm it. He says it's not his doing, and Weezy says it is. But neither of them can kind of prove it. I mean, how do you prove that you don't have these accounts in the first place? I don't know. But one thing you can draw from this is that... And that's just my speculation, right? There's a lot of people in MVM that are unhinged. Just slightly, right? And I'm sure those people that dislike VZ just as much as they dislike Basil right and what better way to pit two people that you dislike against each other right to tear each other to just have them tear themselves apart right just make them fight each other while you sit on the sidelines and just have a laugh at it and that's just my take as outside observer just not being involved at all I don't really like these random willy nilly accusations that you can't confirm at all. And there's no, there's no, uh, there are no resources to whatever he's talking about. He didn't even link that Google Doc. Right? It's just random shit. It's community group, TF Connect, it's Discord, it's Twitter, and then his, his music list. Shut up. So why not why not list all these resources that you gathered? Just put it in the description for people to independently confirm, read through. 